All right, as promised, let's get you right now to the Rose Garden at the White House. President Biden speaking alongside Japan's prime minister after their one-on-one -on -one meeting. Let's listen. Together, our are taking significant steps to strengthen defense security cooperation. We're modernizing command and control structures and to increase the interoperability and planning of our militaries so they can work together in a seamless and effective way. This is the most significant upgrade in our alliance since the end of, since it was first established. I'm also pleased to announce that for the first time, Japan and the United States and Australia will create a network system of air, missile, and defense architecture. We're also looking forward to standing up a trilateral military exercise with Japan and the United Kingdom. And our AUKUS defense partnership with Australia and the United Kingdom is exploring how Japan can join our work in the second pillar, which focuses on advanced capabilities, including AI, autonomous systems. All told, that represents a new benchmark for our military cooperation across a range of capabilities. On the economic front, our ties have never been more robust. Japan is the top foreign investor in the United States. Say that again. Japan is the top foreign investor in the United States. And we, the United States, are the top foreign investor in Japan. Nearly one million Americans work in Japanese companies here in the United States. And to name just one example, a few months ago, Toyota announced an $8 billion investment in a massive battery production facility in North Carolina, which will employ thousands of people. Prime Minister is going to travel to North Carolina tomorrow to visit that project. Don't stay. Don't stay. We need you back in Japan. They'll probably try to keep you. He also affirmed the science and education ties between Japan and the United States. Those ties, ties stretch up to the moon, where two Japanese astronauts will join future American missions, and one will become the first non-American ever to land on the moon. And they reach into the high schools and universities as well, where the Mineta, Ambassador Mineta's program exists, named for our dear friend Norm Mineta. We're going to invest in new student exchanges, help train the next generation of Japanese and American leaders. We'll also discuss developments in the Middle East, including our shared support for a ceasefire and a hostage deal, and urgent efforts to deal with the humanitarian crisis that exists in Gaza. We also want to address the Iranian threat to launch a significant — they're threatening to launch a significant attack on Israel. As I told Prime Minister Netanyahu, our commitment to Israel's security against these threats from Iran and its proxies is ironclad. Let me say it again, ironclad. We're going to do all we can to protect Israel's security. And finally, I want to commend the Prime Minister himself. He's a statesman. Command — you know, the fact is that uh, you condemned Putin's invasion of — brutal invasion of Ukraine when it happened. You pledged more than $12 billion in aid, prioritizing nuclear nonproliferation at the United Nations Security Council standing strong with the United States as we stand up for freedom of navigation, including in the South China Sea, and as we maintain peace and stability across the Taiwan Straits, and taking the brave step of mending ties with the Republic of Korea, so we can all stand shoulder to shoulder together. Tomorrow, we will both be joined by another good friend, President Marcos of the Philippines, for a trilateral summit, the first of its kind. And through it all, our commitment to the defense of Japan under Article 5, including the Sino excuse me, Senkaku Islands, is unwavering. Mr. Prime Minister, through our partnership, we have strengthened the alliance. We have expanded our work together. We've raised our shared ambitions. And now the U.S.-Japan alliance is a beacon to the entire world. There's no limit what our countries can and our people can do together. So thank you for your partnership, your leadership, and your friendship. And now over to you, Mr. Prime Minister. Hi, Joe. Thank you very much. Joe to Jill Fujin, no go shoot. I need. I'm going to thank you. Thank you, Joe. Biden President and I, we have been in a very difficult conversation. And confirmed our shared notion that we are at crucial crossroads. 
and that Japan-U.S. partnership is immensely important. The international community stands at a historical turning point. In order for Japan, the U.S., the Indo-Pacific region, and for that matter, the whole world to enjoy peace, stability, and prosperity lasting into the future, we must resolutely defend and further solidify a free and open international order based on the rule of law. And again today, I told the president that now is the time to demonstrate the true values that Japan and the United States can offer as global partners, that we must together fulfill our responsibilities to create a world where human dignity is upheld, and that Japan will always stand firm with the United States. I explained that based on our national security strategy, Japan is determined to strengthen our defense force through possession of counter-strike capabilities, increase our defense budget and other initiatives, and was reassured by President Biden of his strong support for such efforts. In such context, we confirmed again the urgency to further bolster the deterrence and response capabilities of our alliance and concurred on reinforcing our security and defense cooperation to increase interoperability between the U.S. forces and our self-defense forces, including the improvement of our respective command and control frameworks. We will be discussing the specifics as we plan for the next Japan U.S. 2 plus 2. The president and I went on to discuss various specific challenges faced by the international community. First, we confirmed that unilateral attempts to change status quo by force or coercion is absolutely unacceptable wherever it may be, and that we will continue to respond resolutely against such action through cooperation with allies and like-minded nations. From such perspective, we agreed that our two countries will continue to respond to challenges concerning China through close coordination. At the same time, we confirmed the importance of continuing our dialogue with China and cooperating with China on common challenges. We also underscored the importance of peace and stability in the Taiwan Straits and confirmed opposition to encourage peaceful resolution of the cross Straits issue. The situation in North Korea, including nuclear and missiles development, was brought up as well. We welcomed the progress seen in many areas of cooperation based on the outcome of the Japan-U.S. ROK Summit last August and concurred to coordinate even more closely as we face serious concerns under the current state of affairs. President Biden once again demonstrated his strong support towards the immediate resolution of the abduction issue. We reaffirmed the importance of realizing a free and open Indo-Pacific based on the rule of law and concurred to maintain close collaboration through various opportunities, including the Japan-U.S.-Philippines summit, which is planned for tomorrow. Regarding Russia's aggression of Ukraine, based on a recognition that Ukraine today maybe East Asia tomorrow, taking the issue as our own problem for Japan, 
I expressed our resolution to continue with stringent sanctions against Russia and strong support for Ukraine, and we concur to maintain close partnership with like-minded countries. On the situation in the Middle East, I expressed my respect for the efforts of President Biden towards the release of the hostages, improvement of the humanitarian situation, and for calming down the situation. I then explained how Japan is continuing diplomatic efforts uh, to improve the humanitarian situation and to realize a sustainable ceasefire and agreed to continue close uh, cooperation towards the improvement of the situation, the realization of a two-state solution, and the stabilization of the region. Regarding the economy, we firstly concurred that for both of us to lead the global economic growth together, the promotion of investment in both directions is important. I explained how Japanese businesses are making a significant contribution to the U.S. economy by their investment and the creation of jobs to which President Biden agreed. In order to maintain and strengthen the competitive edge in the area of advanced technologies and to respond appropriately to issues such as economic coercion, non-market policies and practices, and excess capacities, and to overcome the vulnerability of the supply chains and to lead a sustainable and inclusive economic growth. We affirmed that the collaboration of Japan and the United States is indispensable. In addition, we concurred to advance our cooperation in the areas such as decarbonization, AI, and startups. There was a huge achievement also in the area of space. In the first half of the 1960s, when I was in the United States, it was the dawn of space development in the United States. I am one of all those who were so excited in the U.S. by the spectacular challenge in space. The implementing arrangement has been signed on this occasion, and the provision of the lunar rover by Japan and the allocation of two astronaut flight opportunities to the lunar service to Japan were confirmed. Under the Artemis program, I welcome the lunar landing by a Japanese astronaut as the first non-U.S. astronaut. We also discussed the efforts towards a world without nuclear weapons. We affirmed the realistic and practical endeavors of nuclear disarmament, including the issuance of the G7 leaders' Hiroshima vision last year. And I welcomed the participation of the United States in the FMCT Friends, which was launched by my initiative. Lastly, in order to further strengthen the people-to-people -people bond, which is the cornerstone of our unwavering Japan U.S. relationship, we are firm to further promote people-to-people -people exchanges. As the outcome of our meeting today, we will issue the joint statement titled The Global Partners for the Future. This is the expression of the determination of Japan and the United States to maintain and strengthen a free and open international order based on the rule of law that underpins uh, the peace, stability, and prosperity of the international community and states the guiding uh, principles. With our partnership, we will defend uh, the future of Japan and the United States, the Indo-Pacific, and the world, and make that future all the more prosperous. Thank you. Now we'll take a few questions. Jordan Fabian of Bloomberg. Thank you, Mr. President. 
Uh, last month, uh, you predicted the Federal Reserve would cut interest rates thanks to falling inflation. Uh, but today, data showed that inflation rose more than expected for the third straight month. So how concerned are you about the fight against inflation stalling? And do you stand by your prediction for a rate cut? Well, I do stand by my prediction that before the year is out to be a rate cut. This may delay it a month or so. I'm not sure of that. I don't, we don't know what the Fed is going to do for certain. But look, we have dramatically reduced inflation from 9% down to close to 3%. We're in a situation where we're better situated than we were when we took office, where we, inflation was skyrocketing. And we have a plan to deal with it, whereas the opposition, my opposition, talks about two things. They just want to cut taxes for the wealthy and uh, raise taxes on other people. And so I think they have no plan. Our plan is one I think is still sustainable. Mr. Prime Minister, uh, you've said that the Pond Steel acquisition of U.S. Steel is a private matter. But I'm wondering, did you discuss the matter today with President Biden? And do you believe that politics are influencing President Biden's decision to oppose the deal? And I wouldn't mind, Mr. President, if you answer that one, too. Hi. On the issue that you have raised, we understand that discussions are underway between the parties. We hope these discussions will unfold in directions that would be positive for both sides. Japan believes that appropriate procedures based on law is being implemented by the U.S. government. Japan is the largest investor to the United States. Japanese businesses employ close to 1 million workers in the United States, and investment from Japan to the U.S. can only increase upwards in the months and years to come. And we wish to cement this win-win relationship. Thank you. I stand by my commitment to American workers. I give a man of my word. I'm going to keep it. And with regard to that, I stand by our commitment to our alliance. This is uh, exactly what we're doing, a strong alliance as well. Prime Minister's microphone, please. Nakakuki of Kyodo News. My question is to both Prime Minister Kishida and President Biden. At the summit, you confirmed your strong objections against unilateral attempts to change status quo by force or coercion by China and agreed on reinforcing response capabilities. Under current circumstances, should Japan and the United States bolster defense capabilities, China may become more preoccupied in military expansion and intensify its coercive behavior. That is the risk of dilemma. In order to avoid divide and expand avoid the divide, how should Japan and U.S. respond? Let me then take that question first. At this summit, we confirmed that the United States and Japan will resolutely defend and bolster a free and open international order based on the rule of law, and that Japan and the United States as global partners shall work together. On challenges concerning China, including the point you raised on objecting to unilateral attempts to change status quo by force or coercion, we concurred that Japan and the United States as global partners shall work in close coordination. And also, as I said previously, we will continue our dialogue with China, and we will cooperate with China in tackling common challenges. And the President and I confirmed the importance of such dialogue as well. Based on the solid trust with our ally, the United States, We will continue to call on China to fulfill its responsibilities as a major power. 
Japan's policy, which I have consistently embraced, is to comprehensively promote the mutual strategic relationship we have with China and establish a constructive and stable Japan-China relationship through efforts by both sides. That has been my consistent position that I have upheld. We will continue to seek close communication with China at all levels. That's it for me. Now, uh, first of all, we keep improving our lines of communication with one another. That's the United States and China. We, I met, I've recently spoken at length with President Xi, and we've agreed that we would, number one, have personal contact with one another whenever we want to discuss anything, so there'd be no, nothing lipped as, no, no, nothing slips, as they say, between the cup and the lip, so we know exactly what the other team is thinking, number one. And uh, so we had a long discussion last, uh, almost, I guess almost two weeks ago now. And uh, the best way to reduce the chances of miscalculation and misunderstanding, that's number one. Number two, in our alliance we have with Japan is a purely defensive in nature. It's a defensive alliance. And the things we discussed today improve our cooperation and are, and are purely about defense and readiness. It's not aimed at any one nation or a threat to the region. And it, uh, it doesn't have anything to do with conflict. And uh, so this is about restoring stability in the region. And I think we have a chance of doing that. Okay. Third, the next question. Who do I call on next? Hang on a second. I got my list here. Hang on. I apologize. Aurelia of AFP. Thank you. My first question would go to both of you, Mr. President and Mr. Prime Minister. Is there a path for Japan to become a full member of AUKUS? And I would have a second question for you, Mr. President. You're now saying that Benjamin Netanyahu is making a mistake in Gaza. What are you willing to do to make him change his strategy? And would you consider conditioning military aid to Israel? Thank you. Thank you. Your question about AUKUS, I will uh, respond. Our uh, country, we want to contribute to the peace and stability of the region, and therefore we have consistently supported AUKUS. Having said that, the participants of AUKUS, US, UK, Australia, with such countries by bilateral relationship or on multilateral occasions, we have established various relationships. But for Japan to have a direct cooperation with AUKUS, nothing has been decided at this moment. Going forward with US, UK, or with Australia, with such countries, in bilateral or multilateral frameworks, we will continue our cooperation. So that uh, will uh, continue to be considered. At the moment, about the relationship between Japan and AUKUS, that's it. With regard to uh, my discussions with uh, Bibi Netanyahu, Prime Minister Netanyahu, as well as our relationship with Israel, I have been very blunt and straightforward with the Prime Minister, as well as his War Cabinet, as well as the Cabinet. And uh, the fact of the matter is that uh, uh, Bibi and I had a long discussion. He agreed to do several things that related to, number one, getting more aid, of both food and medicine, into Gaza, and reducing significantly the attempts, the civilian casualties in any action taken in the region. And thus far, and, we, and it's tied to the hostages, there are a number of hostages that are being held. Uh, by, uh, by the, the uh, uh, Hamas, and uh, just yesterday we're meeting with the Vice President, our National Security Advisor before that, and, they, and they're American hostages as well, and they know how committed we are, the whole team, to getting their loved ones home. We're not going to stop until we do. The new proposal on the table 
Uh, Bill Burns led the effort to, uh, for us. We're grateful for his work. There's a now up to Hamas. They need to move on the proposal that's been made. And as I said, uh, we'll get these hostages home where they belong, but also bring back a six-week ceasefire that we need now. And the fact is that we're they're getting in somewhere in the last three days over 100 trucks. It's not enough, but it needs to be more. And there's one more opening that has to take place in the north. So we'll see what he does in terms of meeting the commitments he made to me. This okay. will be the last reporter. Mr. Shimizu, please. Thank you. Shimizu of NHK. I ask the question to both of you. As Prime Minister Kishida mentioned, the abduction issue of North Korea, I believe, was discussed. Prime Minister, you have expressed your wish to have a direct engagement with Kim Jong-un, but they say that abduction is already resolved, which means that they are refusing. During the meeting, what did you tell President Biden about the outlook of a summit, and what engagement did you ask President Biden? President Biden, my question, what did you hear from Prime Minister Kishida, and what is your observation and feeling, your president, and with the nuclear missile issues, what is your position? Do you support early summit between in Japan and North Korea. Thank you. First of all, if I may start regarding my summit meeting with President Biden about North Korea, including the missile and nuclear issues we have discussed, and regarding the increasingly worrying situation, we have agreed to continue a close coordination. And uh, on uh, top of uh, that, uh, we concurred uh, that uh, the window of uh, a discussion with North Korea is open, and uh, we discussed uh, that uh, Japan, U.S., uh, Japan, U.S., and ROK will continue to work closely uh, together. I also asked for the continued understanding and cooperation for the immediate resolution of the abduction issue. And President Biden once again gave myself a very strong assurance. Regarding the recent announcement by North Korea, I will refrain from commenting on each and every announcement by North Korea. But as I have been mentioning repeatedly, Based on uh, the perspective that the establishment of a meaningful relation between Japan and North Korea is in the interest of both Japan and North Korea, and that it would be hugely uh, beneficial to the peace and stability of the region, my policy is to aim for a summit meeting with North Korea to resolve various issues and will advance high-level consultation directly under my uh, instruction, and that remains unchanged. That is my response. We did discuss this issue. We both agreed that DPRK must, must also address the serious human rights and humanitarian concerns of the international community, including the immediate resolution of the abduction issue. But you know, the Prime Minister has just spoken to the potential what his plans may mean, but welcome, I welcome the opportunity, we welcome the opportunity of our allies to initiate dialogue with the Democratic Republic of Korea. So I've said many times, we're open to dialogue ourselves at any time, without preconditions of the DPRK. So I have faith in the in the Japan, I have faith in the Prime Minister, and I think his seeking a dialogue with them is a good thing. It's a positive thing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What did everybody holler at once? I'll ask you briefly. On the issue of abortion, sir, respectfully, what is the state of the people of Arizona right now? Do you have any I'll ask you briefly. On the issue of abortion, sir, respectfully, what do you say to the people of Arizona right now who are witnessing a law go in place that dates back to the Civil War era? Elect me. I'm in the 20. So 20th century, 21st century, not back then. They weren't even a state. I find. Thank you all very much. Thank you. How does the war in Ukraine come to an end, sir? This concludes. Will you reconsider? Sir, how does the war in Ukraine come to an end by the House? The war in Ukraine comes to an end by the House. 
leader allowing a vote. There's overwhelming support for Ukraine among the majority of Democrats and Republicans. There should be a vote now. Is there a plan for peace? Is there a plan for peace? Will you reconsider the LNG export ban, sir? Reporters making their best effort to get in every question while the president is visible. But there, you've just been watching President Biden speaking alongside Japan's Prime Minister Fumio Kishida uh, as part of this state visit. They had a bilateral earlier today. There will be a state dinner later tonight with the one and only Paul Simon performing. Uh, but top on the agenda, mostly economic um, headlines, a military partnership with Japan that, in the president's words, quote, raise a new benchmark of cooperation. We heard them also speak about uh, the U.S.'s ties with Japan economically, saying that Japan is the top foreign investor in the U.S. and that vice versa is true. Interestingly enough, we heard about a major lunar announcement where Japan would join U.S. efforts to get back to the moon and, in fact, provide the first non-American to set foot, foot on the lunar surface. But we also heard questions raised about a potential deal between uh, Japan-owned Nippon Steel to buy U.S. steel that President Biden intervened in, and he said today that he stands by his position, uh, a commitment to American workers, as he calls it, while also committed to the relationship with Japan. One of the reporters we heard uh, throw those questions out as the president left was our own CBS News senior White House correspondent, Weijia Zhang. Uh, from your point of view, Weijia, what stood out as a major takeaway from what these two leaders did and did not say today? Well, Errol, even though President Biden did not explicitly talk about China at length, that was really the undercurrent of everything these two leaders had to say as they talked about their alliance with regard to bolstering their relationship uh, when it comes to their military, cooperating, integrating their systems more. Even when they were talking about artificial intelligence and cooperating in space, these are all things that are tangentially, at the least, related to China as it continues its aggressions and its goals of dominance, especially in that region. And so this really underscored the relationship well, between the, the U.S. The and Japan. I mean, you might remember that President Biden, when he first came here to the White House, the first country he, vis he welcomed to visit here uh, was Japan. And so it really just reinforces what he has been saying all along, because Errol, you know, regardless of what we are talking about in terms of Joe Biden's foreign policy, China is going to be at the center of it. But he did stress again that that relationship is on the mend, if you will, because there were some icy uh, months that caused some concern because the two leaders were not talking. So the president made it a point to say that he is in regular contact now with President Xi Jinping of China. And Weijia, I want to ask you about the rare area of disagreement as we see all these topics of unity as it relates to uh, Japan's efforts, the Japan-owned company Nippon Steel, to purchase U.S. steel, which President Biden himself opposes and said today that he remains committed to American workers. Help us understand the president's thinking there and how it impacts the relationship. Sure. So you're absolutely right. It was a little bit of an awkward moment because the president had just spoken at length about the economic relationship between these two countries and how much both are investing into the other one. Uh, but at the same time, we know that the president has opposed a deal for Japan to purchase U.S. steel, a $15 billion deal, because this administration, the president especially, says that that massive 
massive company that has a legacy here in America ought to stay here. And today he was asked about it and said that, you know, his commitment to steel workers remains. And he didn't say much more, Errol, except uh, that, you know, he would continue to support the American company and imply that, you know, he still opposed to that deal going through. That's right. And U.S. Steel based in Pittsburgh. We know President Biden um, received the endorsement of the U.S. steel workers after refusing to allow this deal to go through. And of course, it's an election year in Pennsylvania, certainly one of the many swing states. And it came just after the, chi uh, the, 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 the Japanese prime minister said he hopes that there is um, uh, discussions underway for both sides to be happy. So that's one area of disagreement. We also heard the president um, answer a question as it relates to his conversations about um, the war between Israel and Hamas. What can you tell us uh, about what he said and if it sheds any new light into the U.S. relationship between President Biden and, and the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Well, we know that in his most recent interview, the president said that Netanyahu had made a mistake with his approach to handling the war in Gaza. Uh, we also know that, you know, during that conversation that he had with Netanyahu, uh, he did warn, essentially, that if Israel did not change its course of action, then the U.S. would have to. But one big question still remains, Errol, even after today, even though the president was directly asked whether he was prepared to condition aid uh, to Israel, and he did not say one way or another, but he did stress that Netanyahu made commitments, that it appeared he was following through on them, and separately said that the U.S. would continue to um, uh, support Israel's right to defend itself. So you ask if there's anything new there. Not really. I mean, the president is stressing what the administration or other officials have already said, which is that you know, they are prepared to change course, but what that means has not been spelled out. Of course, we can um, assume that it might have to do with aid and support uh, or sanctions or economic packages to Israel. But again, no clear answer as the president tries to carefully walk this line. And as our viewers join us now, Weijia, it's about 2 p.m. here on the East Coast. Uh, our senior White House correspondent, Weijia Zhang, is giving us a bit of a debrief after President Biden um, held a press conference with the Japanese Prime Minister, Fumio Kishida, as part of a state visit today. You and I have just walked through some of the big headlines, what was and what was not mentioned, but state dinners come with a certain level of pomp and circumstance and ceremony as well. Uh, Weijia, you're braving the conditions outside for us, but what can you tell us about what is to be expected later tonight, including a celebrity dinner performance, I understand. That's right, Errol. Uh, state dinner is probably one of the greatest gifts that uh, a U.S. president can give to another foreign leader because it signifies the level of um, that relationship and how important it is to the United States. So you're absolutely right. That will happen in just a few hours after these two leaders continue their engagements. And there is a lot of pomp and circumstance, as you can imagine, the big reveal of the president with uh, and the prime minister with their dates. Of course, the first lady, everyone wants to know what she'll be wearing. And it really is an opportunity to indulge and to celebrate the relationship between between these two companies with food, with entertainment. And so uh, that will be a highlight of this trip, Errol, but of course, still a lot of work to do uh, throughout the day. Of course, that's right. And Paul Simon, I understand, will perform. Do you have any clue of who picked that artist? Maybe the Japanese prime minister is a fan? Have you heard anything about that? I, you know, that's a great question, <laughs> Errol, and I'll try to report it out, uh, but certainly, is a legend and has been for decades, not only here in the U.S., uh, but around the world. And so it's no surprise. But I think, you know, for, for those who are lucky enough to attend, I am not one of them. Oh. Uh, but they'll certainly have a wonderful show uh, and, and be able to take in all the, the things that, you know, you can't really uh, predict, but, right. you know, body language yeah. and the way that they interact during this very uh, prestigious event, all very important to, to stress their relationship. That's Errol. right. Weijia Zhang walking through all the important topics for us and then some of the, the kind of, you know, more entertainment uh, topics as well. Weijia Zhang, thank you so much. Just so you know, you can call me Al anytime. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Errol.